This is Chicago. At the dawn of the 21st century, Chicago's media was dominated by a handful of major corporations. But a resistance movement arose to free Chicago's media from their clutches. One player in this movement is the Chicago Independent Media Center and its TV show, Chicago Independent Television. The Independent Media Center is a worldwide network of grassroots correspondents committed to using the tools of the media for promoting social and economic justice. You are watching this month's dispatch from the Chicago Independent Media Center. Welcome to Chicago Independent Television, a collection of progressive video reports by grassroots media workers produced free from corporate or commercial support or influence. My name is Jadira Correa, talking to you from the Garfield Park Conservatory. In this episode, we'll hear some voices from a recent pro-labor rally in downtown Chicago. We'll hear from doctors and researchers at a local anti-nuclear action. And we'll take a visit to the National Conference for Media Reform in Boston. Stay with us. Mr. Bishop, I want to use this picture on the front page of our next issue. Oh, come now, Nancy. We can't print a picture like that. The paper is read by people all over the city. Just think what a picture like that would do to the reputation of our newspaper. I don't think we should hide things just because they're unpleasant. How do we stop things like this if we don't let the people know they're happening? Chicago Independent Television is not brought to you by AT&T. The company lobbying hard to destroy network neutrality and public access television. Learn more at SaveTheInternet.com. AT&T, your world degraded. Nor by Blackwater, a worldwide leader in security and murder. Learn more at BlackwaterBook.com. Blackwater, we kill innocent Iraqis so that you can feel more secure. Welcome back to Chicago Independent Television. Rallies across the country have been held in response to Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker's anti-union legislation. In this next segment, we'll visit the recent We Are One rally in Chicago and hear from a few attendees. Reporting here for Chicago Independent Television, I'm David Kennedy, and uh, we're just going around and talking to various people that have interesting signs. Uh, Stop War Funding representative from the Albany Park, North Park, Mayfair Neighbors for Peace and Justice. Can you introduce yourself? My name's Neil Reznikoff. One of the things that the AFL-CIO has uh, left out for years is the uh, role of the U.S. wars, the aggressions abroad. And in terms of uh, cuts on workers, they ignore the f solution of getting money from the war budget, which is huge. You can take all of the state uh, so-called budget deficits combined as uh, less than one-tenth of the total uh, war budget. So the AFL-CIO uh, doesn't bring up uh, that issue. So we're here with our signs to uh, bring that up. 52 cents of every federal tax dollar goes to the military budget. 
So uh, there's plenty of money there, plus the bailout to Wall Street, the various bankers and corporations, uh, the corporations that don't pay any taxes. There's plenty of money available for these um, uh, attacks to pay for the... Uh, there's no need for the attacks on the workers, and AFL-CIO should be uh, addressing that as a problem. And... Uh, not uh, coming up with other solutions such as tax increases or anything else. So what is the AFL-CIO focusing on that perhaps they're focusing on the tactics instead of the strategy, right? Well, AFL-CIO uh, does call for the workers to get together, but it's not too clear what they should get together for. If they don't have a clear path of uh, trying to uh, insist that the uh, working people have a say-so, in the government that their opinions be recognized, which would result in an anti-war government, then we're going to continue with the uh, bulk of the people being ignored. I'm Kathy Peach. I'm president of the support staff of District 39. Uh, we're, we're part of the uh, IFT Local 1274. So tell me what brings you here today? Uh, I'm here to fight for the rights of uh, teachers to negotiate contracts. Yes, there's an organization of uh, corporate leaders who are trying to reform um, the rights of teachers in education. They're, they're saying they're for education reform, and really what they're trying to do is to destroy the right for teachers to negotiate and to privatize education. Well, it's important for uh, teachers to be able to collectively bargain because the teachers are there standing for the students, the children of Illinois. And so if they strip that right, then um, corporations and private companies will come in and take over the schools and they'll be working for the maximum profit, not the maximum uh, rewards for the students. So, so it's really important for everybody to care about this because it affects the future of our children. So it's, it's really exciting and, and heartening to see all the different unions come together, the, the uh, Teamsters unions and the, and the uh, teachers unions and the firefighters, everybody coming together to work for those rights. It's very heartening. Uh, yeah, my name is Eric Curl. I'm part of the International Socialist Organization here in the city of Chicago. Um, we do. We have several branches around the city. Uh, we're delighted to be here, out here today, with our union brothers and sisters. Uh, you know, raising the questions that face working class people, defending our jobs, defending our incomes, defending our homes, a whole number of things. Um, you know, so the slogans that we are chanting on our march here today is, uh, you know, about talking about how the banks have been bailed out. Um, you know, over the course of the financial, uh, the financial crisis. Meanwhile, the rest of us are being forced to pay the bill, uh, while a few people that sit at the top of society, you know, are continuing to get rich off of it. Meanwhile, the rest of us are just kind of struggling to get by. So yeah, we're the International Socialist Organization. Our banner is uh, an injury to one is an injury to all. It's basically talking about uh, the basics of working class solidarity. That is, when we see anyone that's under attack, uh, it's important for all of us to come to the defense of those people and unite in a common struggle because it makes us stronger and also uh, you know, makes the possibility of winning um, much more possible, more realistic. So you know, I think that we have to use any of the tools that are at our disposal. If that means negotiating a contract with the hotel to improve your rights um, around basic things like bathroom breaks, sick days, which is something that Jimmy John's workers in Minneapolis are fighting over right now. Well, uh, this sounds very interesting. You mentioned the uh uh, Jimmy John's campaign in, in Minnesota, uh, who's helping to organize that and can you tell me about the differences and similarities between that organization and your organization? Well, that's primarily being done by the inter industrial workers of the world uh, who's, who have done some fabulous campaigning, I think, over the last couple of years around Starbucks employees, uh, cafe baristas, and now Jimmy John's workers.
My name's uh, Andy Bolduck, and uh, yeah, I'm a, a member of the IWW. I've been a member since January. Uh, basically, we're just trying to make sure that the IWW has a presence um, at these labor events, uh, also to talk to people and um, uh, spread the idea that we need to start taking um, militant union actions rather than a political strategy which has led us to this point. We've been trying to use politics to, up to this point and it's led us right into the ditch. We need to start doing, using direct action to, uh, to th that's the only way the union movement is going to uh, be revitalized. There, the the uh, solution offered um, here today by most of these union leaders has been, let's support Democrats, we'll just keep continue to support Democrats and somehow uh, we'll pack, you know, legislatures and, and school boards and all different, you know, uh, um, political bodies with, with more Democrats and they'll uh, support us. But they haven't been doing that so far. Um, they have, they, they, they're the ones who have brought us to the point where, you know, essentially we're begging. We're begging, you know, uh, uh, not to have our rights taken away. We'll accept all the concessions in the world. You know, take this, take that. Just don't take these collective bargaining rights. We need to get a little more militant and demand you know, through direct action, that uh, that you know things change. We got it. I mean, uh, nothing but a massive uprising is going to change. Is going to change our politics. Is going to is going to change. Um, uh, is going to stop this attack on workers. Really, what IWW uh, the IWW tries to do is. Uh, uh, and, you know, uh, uh, build unions who will uh, uh, not just work through the you know uh, established political system, which uh, which favors um, the very people that you know we're trying to win concessions from. The uh, pie in the sky goal is a general strike, um, and 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 uh, and I think rank and file union members need to push their union leaders to be you know taking more militant action. Um, uh, or, or, or not, not just supporting Democrats. Okay, my name is Blanca Morales. I'm a steel worker, specifically a woman of steel. My local union number is Local Union 3657. So, uh, we no longer just think United States. We think of our brothers and sisters throughout the world. And specifically now, this coming July 28th, will be the fifth anniversary of very, very awful uh, strike that is happening in Cananea, Sonora, Mexico, with the miners. They have been uh, assaulted by troops uh, numerous times, and we're talking about thousands of troops that have invaded Cananea, have removed our members, our brothers and sisters from the front of the mines, have assaulted women and children. Um, the um, Americans, and I'm an American, you know, I'm a Mexican-American, but America has to understand as long as the standard of living is going to be poverty level in Mexico, people are going to come here. They're going to come here by droves. No parent is going to let a, a child starve. Um, I would just have to say solidarity forever, and that means globally. That means everyone out there, you know, we've got to beat this, you know, this, this monster that's attacking all our livelihoods, you've got to put it to an end, and it begins with each and every one of us. Don't let someone else do the work that you need to be working. There's too many of us that are at work making money while the rest of us are sacrificing our livelihoods to do it for you. So I say, brothers and sisters, solidarity forever. Thank you. Chicago Independent Television is not brought to you by Coca-Cola, whose logo is stained red by the blood of murdered Colombian labor union organizers. Learn more at KillerCoke.org. Coke, the drink of the death squads. Nor by McDonald's. Environmental destruction, unhealthy food, low wages, and repressed labor rights. 
and lawsuits against people who talk about it. Learn more at mclibel.org. McDonald's, I'm not loving it. <laughs>